Hi everybody, this is Matt Geary for Geek Pride, and this is another Game of Thrones theory piece. Okay, as the title suggests, this is a piece about Littlefinger, aka Peter Baelish. But just in case some of you aren't too up to speed with the whole Game of Thrones thing, then read no further because there will be spoilers, speculations and predictions ahead. Now what I'm about to say is something I've been pimping around for many years now. In fact, I've been preaching this theory since I finished reading the books over six years ago and the series only steeled my resolve to inform more people, including members of the cast who, if past interviews are to be believed, uh, weren't too adverse to it. Now, a quick caveat to this piece is I had written it a few weeks before the series started, this series even, but I haven't got round to recording the audio until now, so as the new series marches on and there not being any signs of the winds of winter, uh, some things are looking promising, others not so much. But on a whole, I feel we may all be in for a big upset come the end of the books and or the series, and my theory, though not played out in exact specifications, depending again if you're watching the series or reading the books, will diverge into the same direction. It is my view that Peter Baelish uh, could well end up in the series and or the books as king, or at least about to become king of Westeros. I have seen visions in the fire of him sitting upon the Iron Throne, having schemed, murdered and bribed his way to the top. The camera slowly pans out and up to his face, he looks up, smirks and the screen goes black. Cue Game of Thrones music. Epic, right? Whoa, whoa, whoa there, Matt. What about Danny, Jon Snow, Tyrion and all the others? There's no way they would let that happen. Okay, granted, it does seem uh, improbable and there are a lot of obstacles in the way, the largest two being the divergence between the series and the books, and greater than that, audience expectations. If you were to ask the average Game of Thrones watcher how they want the series to end, it is like you will get something along the lines of Jon and Danny living happily ever after as king and queen, with Tyrion as hand and the new, and the new lord of Casterly Rock three heads of the dragons and see my other theory piece about this. This is a highly plausible scenario which would make sense but for one thing. I don't think that G.R.R. Martin would end it like that and if I have a feeling based on all other HBO series I don't think they would either. Martin likes his history and despite the fantasy backdrop of the Song of Ice and Fire its influence is deeply rooted in historic conflict. The wall being Hadrian's Wall and the wars and intrigue being based on the Roman Civil Wars and the end of the Wars of the Roses. All complicated, bloody and treacherous affairs, with the victor not just being the strongest but generally the most cunning. Not persuaded? Well let's look at this logically. Bearing in mind that Martin seems to like to kill main characters off and hit you with the curveballs left, right and centre, what are the chances that he will end the series on a happy note? I'd say slim, and why should he, or why should they? What will get your life's work talked about more? A great series slash sets of books with a happy ending that gives everyone closure, or a great series or books with gut-wrenching end and no one that no one was expecting. It has to be the latter. If it ended nicely, White Walkers defeated, Danny and John in charge of Westeros, dragons by their side, then people would walk away going, Oh, that was nice. I knew Danny and John would prevail. Done, no debate, no shock, no theory, just closure, and so the series and the books are forgotten. End it with a shock and the death of some of more of your favourite characters, and the internet will literally explode. People will be talking about it for years, and Martin's legacy will be crowned the same way it was founded, in the blood, tears, and internet rage. Now granted there are some serious plot blockages that would need to be gotten through, especially with the books being different to the series, especially with regards to Littlefinger, and the fact that Tyrion is favoured by Martin and Danny by his wife. Some serious plot armour there. People who would have to die or at least go away would include Varys, Cersei, Jaime, Grey Worm, Missandei, Arya, Bran, Mira, Pod, Brienne, Jora, Davos, Melisandre, Dondarrion, the Hound, Thoros of Mir, the Martell, Sands, and of course Jon Snow, Danny, and the Dragons. Bookwise, you also have Little Griff and his army, and even Lady Stoneheart, and some others. 
You'll note I didn't mention Sansa, which is a complicated matter, made all the more complicated because different things happen to her in the book and the series. For example, she isn't shipped off to Winterfell to marry Ramsay in the book, but a family friend called Jane Poole is, in the guise of Arya. In the end, Littlefinger loves her and is in his own way and still needs her, so why would he? The fact that she is in the series does cast a shadow on her relationship with him. But I have a feeling that despite the seemingly unforgivable betrayal, she will forgive him. Be it because she needs him, tensions between her and Jon Snow, which are more shown in the series as it is now, or because she somehow falls for him. I'm unsure. This is how I think it might play out in either the books or the series. Maybe both, hopefully. Littlefinger has been the catalyst or at least party to most of the main happenings in the Game of Thrones. Think of a big death and generally you can link it back to him in some way. But yet, despite playing such an starring role in, well, everything, he isn't the main character really. He's a supporting character, in the shadows, advising, plotting, scheming. Nobody is rooting for him, but likewise no one is really gunning for him either. We are talking about the audience and characters here as well. For all intents and purposes, he is invisible, and that is why he is perfect. Think about it. He has been power building from day one, going from penniless boy taken in by the Tullys, to Master of Coin for King Robert, to Lord of Hiron Hall, to de facto Lord of the Vale, with machinations for control of the North, and, according to Series 6, the Iron Throne itself. Now, all true, Matt, but how do we get past all the list of names above? Well, that's simple. War. Littlefinger has gained much from war, simply because people are killed, titles and lands have become vacant, and he has backed the right side. It therefore stands to reason that as the wars come to an end, there will be no difference. Many of the above named lists will be killed, betrayed, or fall in line. Otherwise, it will be a pretty boring season or set of books. It is very likely in my mind, and based on Danny's visions from the House of the Undying, that the Red Keep will meet the same fate as the Sept, and that Cersei, enemies on all sides, having lost Jaime, that's right, I think Jaime will die too, will choose to blow it up rather than let them take it. Hence the vision in the throne room destroyed and covered in what looks like snow, but what actually I think is actually ash. Therefore, within the first war to regain the Seven Kingdoms, I would expect a fair few characters to meet their fate, and it would stand to reason that by the end of the final war to defeat the army of the dead, in Season 8 and Book 7 comes, that we will have a much diminished uh, character base, a lot will revolve around Danny, John, and the dragons. Now, a quick update here from uh, the series as it is now. We know that a lot of the people are being killed off already, with hints at the deaths of main ones like Varys, Melisandre, and even Grey Worm. The book and series divergence makes predicting what's going to happen in both hard, but in the book, I would see the wall falling to the Horn of Winter, the ice dragon waking from within its captivity, and battle ensuing between the two types of dragon, ice and fire, with likely deadly consequences. There is also a chance that Euron Greyjoy may have found the Horn of Summer, which legend has it controls dragons on his travels, and it may be used to control some of Danny's dragons. Uh, further update, as it is the series-wise, we know that the gift to Queen Cersei was Ilaria Sand and her daughter, so it is likely that the Horn of Winter and Summer will not be in the series, with rumour having it that one of Danny's dragons will be felled by the Night King when Danny flies north to save Jon Snow and his party raging north beyond the Wall, being resurrected and then used to fight against the peoples of Westeros. It is likely that in place of the Horn of Summer, Cersei's new anti-dragon weapons or ballistas will kill at least or badly injure one of the dragons. Now moving on, by the end of the books, the seasons, Westeros will have been racked by war on multiple fronts, and a lot of our heroes slash anti-heroes will be dead, leaving a power vacuum. Maybe Jon dies again, fighting with the White Walkers, uh, mirrored by Old Nan's tale about the others, and Danny finally takes her rightful place on the throne, albeit with a depleted army behind her and likely none of her dragons or maybe just one of them. By this point, Littlefinger has managed by his own deceit or by the nature of war to get rid of many of his rivals and no doubt wormed his way into Danny's graces with Sansa at his side. Maybe she is currently Queen of the North and he is King after Jon's sacrifice fighting the Night King. Maybe he has the Horn of Summer at the banquet or even Coronation, uses it to command the last dragon to kill everyone. 
Now, Danny is obviously unaffected by fire, but then there is the knife that started the whole thing off with the attempted assassination of Bran. It is used to kill Danny, and with that, he ascends the throne. Game, set, and match, Littlefinger. Pretty far-fetched, uh, granted, but a theory that would seem to hold at least some water, I feel. He's been kept around for some reason, and I don't see it being just to be another notch in the proverbial deathbed post. Littlefinger is the master of the game, and he's been playing it with Varys for years now, and, and others throughout the books and the series, and their moves underlying and affecting everybody. Now the pieces are in their final formations, and it seems to me that we are soon to have one of the greatest endings in a series ever. So, what do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Have another view? Then let us know in the comments below. Now granted, um, it may not pan out exactly as I've said it. You know, maybe John will vanish and become Azura High and turn into a sword or something like that. We have no idea how exactly it's going to turn out, especially with the books in the series diverging so much. But, in the end, I have a good feeling, or a bad feeling, that Littlefinger will be on the throne. Let us know what you think. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a share. Tell everybody about us. Thanks a lot, guys. And until next time, I've been Matt Geary, and this has been another Game of Thrones theory piece.